All right, so here are some selected problems from chapter nine. Uh, we'll start with number 42. Basically, number 42 just says that to use the Lewis symbols to determine the formula for the compound that forms between each pair of elements. Now, this should look really familiar. It's, you've done this before. It's, you know, ionic compounds. Um, it's just now we're adding an extra piece of information to it. So I'll do A, and A is calcium and nitrogen. Right. So calcium's Lewis symbol, there's going to be two dots on it. Nitrogen's is going to have five. Uh, remember that is the valence electrons. So when you look at that, that means that your calcium, for your calcium to uh, have a full shell, Right, you have to take reach an octet, right? There's a couple of things that can happen. Either it can gain six or lose two. It's a lot easier to lose two. So you lose two, you become positive. Um, and nitrogen is in the same boat, right? It can either gain three, one, two, three, or lose five. It's a lot easier to gain three. And if you gain three electrons, you become negative three. So then if you have a positive two and a negative three, your formula has to be that. All right, next up is number 48. Uh, number 48 is a mess, and so I'm glad I have almost this whole page to do it. So basically, what 48 is saying, it says use the Born's-Haber cycle and a bunch of data to calculate the lattice energy for CaO. So CaO is what we're doing. Um, all right, so basically, so I can just on one line. The heat of formation is equal to the heat of sublimation plus, and I do all of your ionization energies, and I kind of do it like that. Just kind of right. You're gonna you're gonna sum them all. So maybe I should put the little sigma in there. But there you have it. Um, Right, and so there's going to be potentially one of those, potentially two of those, potentially three of those. In our case, there'll be two, and you'll see that in a second. Right. Now, half of the bond energy, and we'll talk about that more, obviously, plus your electron affinities. Again, there could be multiple of those. Plus lattice energy. All right, and in the problem, it gives you your delta HF and everything except for lattice energy. It wants you to calculate lattice energy. So that's pretty easy. All right, so now I'll just sub, sub in what we know. So our delta F, it gives you is negative 634.9. And that equals your delta H sublimation, so which is 178. These are all kilojoules or kilojoules per mole. I'm just running out of space here, obviously, and I'd like to, to not run out of space. Plus... Now, we're gonna have two ionization energies here. And let me kind of come down to the bottom and show you what's happening here. Remember, for the ionization energies, you have calcium. And you need to get to calcium plus two, because here, calcium has a positive two charge. So, first thing that needs to happen is you have to remove one electron. So one. And then, that calcium plus one has to become a calcium plus two. So it tells you that your first ionization energy for calcium is 17.35. No, that's the sum of both of them. So it tells you that the first 
the first one is 590 and the second one is 1145 and you sum those and get your 1735 plus half of the bond energy and it's half of the bond energy again I'll come down here and show you because we only need one oxygen and the bond energy is we're doing we're doing this right we're doing this and since we're only doing half of it it's half of the bond energy so this would have a bond energy of 498 it tells you but since we're only doing half of it up here you just add in 249 all right next are your electron affinities so again in the same situation here when this calcium is giving up an electron your oxygen is going to pick it up so we have two let me just squiggle give it the official squiggle line all right you have an oxygen that's going to pick up one electron and become oxygen negative one and you, then you have an oxygen negative one that's going to pick up an electron these are arrows by the way and become oxygen negative two so it tells you in the table that the first one here equals negative 141 and the second one here equals positive 744 so again we'll sum those for our um, activation nope not activation energies our electron affinities and we'll get positive 603 and then last is just our lattice energy so really simple, you have a super simple arithmetic problem there. You just solve for lattice energy. And your lattice energy should be negative 3,400 kilojoules per mole. All right, next up is number 52. Number 52 just wants you to draw the Lewis structure. So I'll do A. I have a whole video on Lewis structures, um, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time going over it right now just because I made a whole video on it. If you're that curious, watch my other video. I'll put a link to it in this YouTube uh, video. So first we're going to count up our valence electrons. Uh, um, nitrogen gets five, and then each of the three fluorine gets seven. So that gives us 27 electrons to work with. You put the least common. Right, the one that there's only one of, or the less the least amount of, in the middle. Put the more common ones around the outside. Give everything eight, and you should never do this in a pen, because this method, um, that's two dots, dang it, often requires erasing, um, but, and now we just count. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. We need 26, we have 26, we, everybody has eight, this is done. Remember, if you came up with a number greater than 20, or yeah, greater than 26, if you came up with like 28, then you would need to cancel off two uh, pairs and make a double bond. Next up is 56. So it's asking if something is covalent, polar covalent, or ionic. And this is just determined by the change in electronegativities, meaning the difference in electronegativities between the three, or the two, I should say, between the two elements. Right? So it's covalent, so it means perfectly covalent if the electronegativity is less than 0.4. It's ionic if it's greater than 2. So it's polar if it's between 0.4 and 2. So for instance, in A, it gives you carbon and nitrogen. Well, if you look at their electronegativities, carbon is a 2.5, nitrogen is a 3.0. The difference there 
is 0.5. So it's polar covalent because 0.5 is between 0.4 and 2. Easy. All right, number 64. All right, number 64 just wants you to draw the Lewis structure and assign formal charges to all the atoms. Easy enough. So again, we'll count this up. Chlorine gets seven. Each oxygen gets six, and there are three oxygens. Since you have a negative one charge, you add one. Remember, you add one because it's negative charge. Electrons have a negative charge. So if you have more electrons, you have more negative. Don't subtract one. Somebody will subtract one, and you'll get it wrong on a test. So you total 26 electrons. Same thing, again, don't do this in pen. Give them all their dots. Man, I'm struggling with those two dots. That is two dots. You count this all up, you'll get 26. And then remember, since it's a polyatomic anion, uh, it, you do that just to say, hey, we added an electron from somewhere. Now let's do formal charges. Um, I'm, let's just call this oxygen one, oxygen two, and oxygen three. So we have oxygen one, oxygen two, oxygen three, and our chlorine. Um, I like to make a little table. You obviously can do whatever you want. So valence electrons. How many valence electrons do they have? Well, all the oxygens have six, and chlorine has seven. You just look at a periodic table, figure that out. Right. And so, remember, it's valence electrons minus paired electrons minus bonds. Now we're going to subtract the number of lone pair electrons. So it's kind of like the number of lone pairs times two, or basically the number of dots you put around the thing. So if you look at oxygen, all the oxygens, two, four, six. Two, four, six, that's a one, not a dot, right? So they should all be six. And in the chlorine, there's two dots. Bonding electrons, or not bonding, it's bonding electrons divided by two, or just bonds, right, number of lines. Each um, oxygen has one. Um, and chlorine has three. So then your formal charge is right here. Right, it's six minus six minus one is negative one. So they're all gonna be negative one. Seven minus two minus three is positive two. And if you sum all those up, they'll sum to negative one, which they should because your ion has a charge of negative one. So that means you did it right. All right, so for number 66, it's kind of the same thing, except it gives you two resonance structures and tells you to determine which one's better. So you have this one. Look, anytime I see dots on a carbon, I don't feel good about it. Maybe that should be a hint. All right, and so it says just tell me, use the formal charges to figure out which one's the good one, which one's the bad one. So uh, I'll do the same thing. Again, I'm gonna call this one H1, H2, H3, H4. H1, H2, H3, H4. That's totally arbitrary. You can do whatever you want. So same thing, right? Number of valence electrons. I'll just put dots. We all know what I'm talking about here. Bonds. And then we get our formal charge out of that. And so, my pen is starting to run a little dry. We have H1. H2, I'm running out of room, H3, H4, S3, 
and C. Whew, squeeze it in. And the same thing over here. And I guess all H's are the same, so I'll just stop. Now you need to be careful because there could be situations where all the same element aren't the same. It's just that this is not one of those cases. All right, so over here, all your H's have one valence electron. That doesn't change ever, right? And sulfurs don't have S, they have six. And carbons have four. Now, none of your hydrogens have any dots on them, which is a good sign. Over here, your sulfur also has zero, and your carbon has four. And so over here, your sulfur has four, and your carbon has zero. Now, if we look at bonds, all of your hydrogens have one. Over here, your sulfur has four, and your carbon has two. And over here, your sulfur has two, and your carbon has four. So we can do this. One minus zero minus one. Zero, 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 zero. All your hydrogens end up being zero, so that's good. Sulfur, six minus four is two. Four minus four minus two is negative two. Zero, zero. So this sums to zero, so that's fine. It's not ideal, but it's fine. But the only thing that beats it is if everything is zero. And since over here everything is zero, that is the winning Lewis structure. All right, last problem, 126. All right, 126 is talking about um, bonds breaking and forming for an endothermic reaction. So remember, your delta H equals broken plus formed. But this is a positive number. And this is a negative number. So it's really broken minus formed, if that makes any sense. So if we want an endothermic reaction, we want a positive delta H. And if we want a positive delta H, then our broken needs to be greater than our formed. Does that make sense? Because if this number is bigger, then the thing becomes negative. So A is correct, because your positive must be greater then the absolute value of your negative. And that's it.